Very good evening again, live on a Thursday evening, Sheffield Live TV with uh, Talking Sheffield, the Talking Sport uh, programme that we do once a week. A mix tonight of uh, ice hockey and football with two great guests, including a debut. Uh, the debut comes from former Sheffield Wednesday midfielder, Matt Hamshaw, he thought I was going to forget his name there, and once, once known, and I saw him score one of the best goals that's been seen at Hillsborough, honestly, and everybody talks to him about that, but it really was a cracker. I'll be referring you to YouTube to check on that, but Matt Hamshaw joins us. He's full-time, though, now with Rotherham United uh, at the Academy. And also, and appearing for the second time in this studio, I'm delighted to say none other than the captain of Sheffield Steelers ice hockey team, Jonathan Phillips, a great guy who entertained us once before. It was actually a year ago. I'm staggered to discover, Jonathan, about a year ago that you were, you were here before. Yeah, it time, was. Time has flown. It has. And we're almost two years into the history now of Sheffield Live TV and, and this programme. I don't know how on earth we've managed to find different guests, but we just the reason that the way we get around it, we invite people back. Um, <laughs> it's great to see you. You've got a big uh, game coming up. Before we just move on with this, I should tell you that in the second half of the show, we've got a guy coming in here who should be comatose, but he's actually sitting up outside the studio as we speak. We'll come in for the second half. Who's now, I think today, run his 69th marathon in 69 days. He's only got six, six or so more to do for his target of 75 in 75 days at the age of 75. He is an amazing man. That's Ray Matthews you'll meet in the second half of the programme. Jonathan, uh, start of the season for Sheffield Steelers before we get into Matt's uh, Hillsborough memories and the current team. Uh, been eventful, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Goals flying in at either end of the ice. Yeah, it's been busy. We've had, uh, we had an early start this year and... Um after winning the league last year, we, we qualified for the Champions League again, which was, you know, uh, you know something the club the club wanted and is is a lot of fun to be involved in. And we uh, we flew off to Sweden and then off to Salzburg and uh, yeah, put ourselves up against the big boys of uh, of Europe. It can be a bit of a mismatch, can't it? Because you, you're huge in this country, and maybe people are being educated as to these much. More, better financed outfits, in fact, hugely financed outfits like Red Bull Salzburg, who you come up against again this weekend. Yeah, I th and I think that's the thing. I mean, the wage the wage packets are, are so much different. The you know the the training, the everything ar around the team is so much different. Sheffield are trying to get that kind of professionalism through the club now, and you know they 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 like to take the experience from from these trips and 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 try and put it back in, into the club, which is great. And, um, you know, they want to be a club who are fighting at the top in all of uh, Europe. And that was uh, indeed the plan when the change of coach uh, came in and Paul Thompson was appointed. It was with a vision, I think, by Tony Smith, not only to be champions in this country, but to become a significant team in Europe as well, wasn't it? That was the vision. Yeah, I think it was a, it was a tough time where... Um, you know, we just won the league, and and, and Tony decided to uh, to move on uh, Jared uh, Adams and bring in Paul Thompson, and, and you know he wanted he saw this vision for the future, and and um, you know Tom seems to be putting that in place and is doing a great job. I, you know, I, everyone at the club seem happy, and there's some good stability there. So mm. things are looking. Uh, it was controversial. Good. That, that change was controversial, but you're beginning to see the bigger picture now, and what was desired. Um, and it will be very interesting. We could bring in Matt on the question of finance because Red Bull Salzburg, I'm reliably informed, uh, have a salary roll of some three and a half million euros, roughly say two million pounds, mm -hmm. compared to Sheffield Steelers' salary roll of I think three hundred and fifty thousand euros. I think there's some eight times difference uh, there. And in fact, eight was the number of goals they got against you in your previous meeting when you went over there to Austin. <laughs> <Just a rugby. laughs> it was eight one, so I suppose yeah. that. We'll talk about the re return fixture at Sheffield Arena this Sunday later, but these figures, um, this spiral is even greater in football. 
Matt Hanshaw, for those of you who don't know, was at Sheffield Wednesday for, for a number of years, 1998 to 2005. His final season coincided with promotion. Yeah, yeah, it did, uh, yeah. From, from League One, uh, the, the Lee Bullen team under, under Paul Sturrock. He's since played for Stockport, uh, Mansfield, Notts County, Macclesfield, Matlock and Stockbridge Park Steels. Currently head of academy coaching at Rotherham. But this spiral, you know, in just a sh few short years, it's just 10 or 11 since she played for... Wednesday. Yeah. It's come out of all recognition now. Isn't yeah. It? Well, I'm I'm kind of probably arguably still young enough to play, but just seeing the change in the uh, You're finances. You're only 30 foot, 30 Yeah, foot the right finances um, is is astronomical, really. Um, you look at Premier League now, and 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 that money's filtered through into Championship, and I mean it, it's a great spectacle now. Obviously, working at Rotherham, seeing seeing the teams coming down to the New York Stadium is it, fantastic, fantastic for the area. I mean, you've got Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, my old club um, in that division, but it, it's just gone. It's gone crazy, to be honest with yeah, you. Not just at the top. I mean, in the lower leagues, one and two, I think the fees are pretty static and the wages aren't going up. But in the championship, there's a huge explosion there. Aston Villa, Newcastle. Ah, oh, well, we, we were talking earlier, weren't yeah. we, about Aston Villa. I mean, is it 60 million or something now spent? Some, yeah. More than some at bigger clubs in Europe and they're in second tier of English football. Yeah. It's. I'm sure some countries look on it and, and, and laugh <laughs> at times. Um, but, you know, the, the stadiums are full. Um, people keep coming through the gates. People want to see it. They're entertained. As a, as a player, I suppose, they're going to take everything they can get. Um, but, you know, it, it's coming to a point, I'm sure, at some point where it, it doesn't need to go away from the working man's game, which, mm. for me, it all, always will be. But at this moment in time, you know, families are, some families are struggling to get the game so yeah it's difficult yeah, yeah it is and I, I, I share your concern mm. there that we must never get away from the working man's game but I think mm. we already are uh, and there's no 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 reversing it um, you either compete or, or you don't well, look at Huddersfield and Barnsley well you know exactly they're doing okay um, with but I think what you're finding now at these clubs is they're getting an infrastructure and they're getting um, a business plan. You know, you look at Barnsley and, and Othersfield and they've got a, a straight line that they're trying to work to all through the club and, and, and that's bringing their success. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at um, Rotherham United as a football club, you know, it's been, what, two, three, uh, two promotions in four seasons. To stay in the championship is a remarkable achievement. I know the chairman is wanting to push on and, and finish as high as he can. Um, and, and it's just been a remarkable turnaround. You know, you think, well, not what, four, five, six years ago, they're playing at Don Valley Stadium, and all of a sudden they're in this New York yeah. Stadium, which I know you've been, is, is a fantastic yeah. stadium to play, and it's, Enjoy it's a great turnaround. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Jonathan, before we go, carry on there with Matt, you've got an interest in this conversation, particularly where Sheffield Wednesday's concerned, I believe. Yeah, yeah, my oldest boy, Oshin, is a big, uh, big Wednesday fan, and uh, he's starting to convert me too, so. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I got I got no choice. <laughs> I don't want to add to your add to your gate, you know, on Sunday at yeah. uh, Sheffield Arena. Now, yeah. that, now, that you, now that you've said that, and just on the on the subject of wages and fees. Oh, all right. Okay. It's it's becoming normal for a Sheffield Wednesday player to be mm. earning thirty thousand a week at the the, the top end, mm. you know, and and more. Um, I'm not going to ask you exact figures, but how many times your salary is that from when you you were playing that a hell of a lot <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe 10 <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, um, yeah i mean obviously when i was at sheffield wednesday we were in premier league um it were at the ice probably that it is now yeah. obviously we got relegated went through the league's type of dropped down to league one the fan support were always fantastic um but they obviously the income coming in People don't really want to see League One football. It's all yeah. about Championship, certainly Premier League. Um, so that that's just how the games change. I mean, yeah. you look look across um, at, at Sheffield Wednesday. I mean, Sheffield United had it, didn't they, when they were in Premier League? So it, it, every club now is is striding to get to the Premier League, and you know the money that's coming through with the TV deals, etc. Um, chairman now aren't sitting on on pots yeah. and pots of money. They're at, they're having a right good go to try and get yeah. get into the uh, promised land. Well, you saw a bit of everything, as you say, uh, under um, Danny Wilson, 98, uh, all the way down, but mm. satisfyingly, your final season, you saw them start to come back. Ad you were a winger, I remember, at the start of your, yeah. your career, and a winger has just come to Hillsborough for, well, £7 million yeah. is the figure eventually. I think £5 million down for Adam Reach. Mm. 
Which, all right, he's, he's a good player, but uh, what's, your, what's your view of him? Is that value for money? Um, I mean, we're sitting here talking about seven million in championship. Um, mm. what, is it value for money? If they get promoted, then yeah, of course it will be value yeah. for money. Um, he's a good, promising young player. I'm sure he'll excite fans across at Hillsborough, so it, it's a good signing, you know, and they're, they're attracting players now, um, which players that probably would not have attracted, what, three, four years ago even, that short. So, yeah, you know, the, as you say, the chairman's investing in the squad. He's, he's really pushing on. Um, and, you know... He... Well, you remember the times of the previous big... Because this deal is actually outstripped Paolo Di Canio. Yeah. Four and a half million. Mm. Who you, you were at the club yeah, with. Yeah. And with Benito Carboni. Yeah. And it, it may be a sign of getting big again when you have an, an unwanted situation like a player refusing to play like we had with Fernando Forestieri the other week nobody wants to see that but it's almost a sign of saying hey this is this is getting big now yeah well again I, I don't know the ins and outs of the For Forestieri thing but you know as a ex-player you never like seeing players not playing um, and and you know whatever has happened happened He's obviously back in the team now for them. He's great because he's a, he's a yeah. great player in that league. Um, but, you know, as an as a ex-player, it, it were a little bit frowned upon, certainly. And I, I know um, it, it wouldn't have really happened in, in our dressing room. But I think, we, we, again, we were talking a fair about senior pros and getting together and, you know, you have a, you have a name. And, a, and people will always earn different amounts of money in the changing room, but your common thread is promotion and the better that you're doing, the, 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 I never sat in a change room thinking, right, if I get promoted, I'm going to get more money. I sat in a change room thinking, I want to get promoted because I want to be the best I can be. And yeah. I think that you, you always want that to kind of stay in a dressing room. There's some players who aren't like that, but majority are, and I think that's where it, sh it should be. And as a manager, it's crucial that they bring players in who are like, over that mindset, you know, mm. who really strive to succeed. Mm, well said. What would have happened in, in your day had a player in what any of your team said, I'm not turning out. What would have happened? Well, you mentioned in about your room. Uh, yeah, you mentioned about Lee Bullen at the, the time when when he was captain of that. A, a, a lot of senior players that have come together. Um, but to be honest, and, and I'm sure you'll back me up, the most successful you've ever been has been the time when you know everybody's in it together and you get a sense and a feeling. <coughs> I don't know what it is, um, yeah. and it even even to the point of like you'll get a big groupie going out something to eat at dinner and you know just. Mentioned again off air about lads have gone for a Frankie and, and Benny's. Don't tell your coach. <laughs> um, but, it's, but like that to yeah. me is a, is is you know you're getting your group of players together and I think Seems as a manager smart. from outside, I'd embrace that because if they're yeah. going out socialised, it means they're going to battle on a yeah. pitch together. What I'd forgotten was that you were in the team on the day that Benny Carboni refused to play for for Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. I think weren't you? Or yeah. you, were, you were in the squad that, that day. squad. Yeah, that was my first ever trip. I went away, so that were a bitter and I hope. This yeah. was at Southampton. Southampton away. Yeah, so I'd spent six hours stood on coach uh, making teas and coffees like you do <laughs> yeah. on your first trip, and then obviously Benny um, got told he wasn't going to be playing and uh, left left the changing room. So. Um, I get a bit. Of it's a lot. That's ancient history. Yeah. You can only imagine the reaction of the other players. Yeah. To something yeah. like that. It were interesting. But, <laughs> but it's good. It's good that a line's been drawn under Forest here. It mm. just happened to have cropped up in our conversation. Mm. And let's hope that he he can get back to producing what he was producing before. Yeah. No reason why not. Well, um, I can't say any reason why not. He's a, he's, a, he's a top top player. Um, as long as he doesn't obviously do it against Rotherham United, then I'll be, <laughs> I'll be pleased with it. Right, Jonathan. Um, Ice hockey, do you, do you get any scenarios like that in ice hockey? I mean, not, not as big and as major as that. Uh, I think we've placed the room quite well. We've yeah. always had a, a real tight group in Sheffield, and I think just going back to, you know, going out for team meals and things like that, we, we, we used to do a thing back in the day where every Monday night we, we'd go out for mandatory Mondays, we used to call it, and whether yeah. you turned up for one beer or 20 beers. <laughs> and, and, and it was, but it was huge, and, you know, we started winning, and winning trophies and, and, and it just kept us all together and everyone pulling in the same direction. And uh, I mean, things have changed now. You mandatory can't, Mondays. Mandatory Mondays. And uh, we can't really get away with that these days. <laughs> I bet you couldn't say that after about 10 pints, could no, you? No, we <laughs> tried. We tried. We tried to the wife. <laughs> it's mandatory now. Which coach introduced that then? It was us, it was the players. Just the players yeah. introduced it? Yeah, yeah, it was the players thing. And, it's not about um, the but it was, Yeah. It's difficult, but you, you look now with social media, etc. How would how would it be deemed by the supporters if 
you know, and it, it, it's just if, how if times you, have changed, I suppose. If you were seen out getting smashed exactly. yeah. any day of the yeah. week, it yeah. And that's the thing, I mean, you can't get away with it these days with social media. And, and just, I mean, football's always been very professional in, mm. in, in the eye, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with the hockey now, is, it is getting bigger and it is getting more professional. So, I mean, you know, we've got to be on the ball yeah. and kind of... And you're very, very fit, there's no question. And the entertainment value we're yeah. going to, I, I think you've been and so Yeah, just, I was talking, yeah, yeah, I used to absolutely love it. I've not yeah. been for years, yeah. but I've... Should go back. Just said with Sunday, yeah. I might, I might yeah. lock down. Have a well, watch. do so. Sunday is against Red Bull Salzburg. It's at uh, Sheffield Arena. What's the start, what's the face-off time there? I think it's six o'clock on Sunday. Six o'clock. It, you've had a, a, start, a difficult start to the season looking at your results, but you did have a very good win against Manchester Storm, 6-4 uh, in the first Challenge Cup game last weekend. You came from behind. We did, so. yeah. We, um, I mean, with, with, with the starts, we, we knew we were going to be up against some good teams. So, I mean, I think the scoreline we were disappointed in. We, we thought, you know, against, against the Swedish team and against Salzburg, we thought we could have done better and put a, a better account of ourselves. Um, we never expected to win those games. We always went in, went in there to win, uh, but just to make a good account, account of ourselves and see what happened on that night. Um, but then, you know, c coming back into our league then and in the Challenge Cup against Manchester, we started slow. I think we, yeah. after the first period, it was, we were 2 nil down, but we felt in, in control of the game and we were getting chances. And, we, um, yeah, we, we, you know, that second period, we kind of took it to them and, 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 and did all the, all the damage and managed to see the game out. What is the expectation this season? I mean, you're champions, so you know, there's only one place to shoot for, isn't there? Yeah, and especially with, with the Steelers, it is, you're expected to win from, mm. from the fans, from the club, from your teammates. It is, it, you know, people know that pressure coming in whenever they're signed and you've got to embrace that and, and um, you know, we want to be the first team to, to win three trophy, uh, three league trophies back. You know, back to back, back to back. So, yes. um, I, yeah. you know, it's going to be a massive task, but it's something that we're all kind of, you know, you pulling expect for. To achieve it. Yeah, and the support has always been very good, many thousands strong for, for, for Steelers. We were talking beforehand about maybe the public just hasn't cottoned <coughs> on to this this Champions League thing yet. You're saying that they obviously, if it was Nottingham, you'd be selling out wouldn't you yeah i think people like to see the local derbies and and you know if we play manchester or, or nottingham and you know as of late now cardiff uh, you know a big team and um we're starting to kind of sell out against them um but yeah I, I, it'd be nice to see more people you know as many people uh, down at the arena as possible against the yeah. against the big teams and and it kind of be that extra support and um this, i mean not saying that the support has been bad because it hasn't, but um, but it's a tough time. Of I year suppose as well. people can get almost spoiled by success, and you know you you win the title more often than you, than you don't. That's uh, it. And, yeah, and um, people get spoiled, I think, a little bit by it. But the entertainment's always there. Although I've noticed, as a layman, that the games are tighter. Sometimes there are fewer goals. You know, maybe it's more physical. Like in the early days of of Steelers, it would be like. 10 4 or something like that and now there's, there's a 2 1 sque squeaking it 2 1 or 1 yeah. nil even well know. back in the day there was i think there was like three or four imports on each team and then the team was just made up of kind of you know a load of british lads now is um as i said before is way more professional is more is is, is full time whereas back then it was part time yeah um and things have just Things have just come so far. I mean, now there's anybody can beat anybody on it any night, and and you've seen that in the last, yeah. I think, probably out of the last five years, I think, three years, the the the, the league has been decided on the final day. Makes it more exciting. It does. Yeah, more from Jonathan Phillips in part two. Uh, we've got the amazing marathon man Ray Matthews joining us. More also from Matt Hamshaw. Now, in the five minutes between now and then, just Google Matt Hamshaw goal, Sheffield Wednesday versus Watford. What year was it? <laughs> you tell me, early 2000s? 2002, probably. 2002, something like that. Amazing goal. 
incredible. There was 4-0, I think, against Watford that night. That's the only one of the four goals I remember. And I've remembered it to this day. Google it and then rejoin us. We'll talk to him about it and more about the Owls. I hope you're back with us. Do watch that and we'll see you soon. Bye. And, and this program. I don't know how on earth we've managed to find different guests, but we just the reason that the way we get around it, we invite people back. Um, <laughs> it's great to see you. You've got a big uh, game coming up. Before we just move on with this, I should tell you that in the second half of the show, we've got a guy coming in here who should be comatose, but he's actually sitting up outside the studio as we speak. We'll come in for the second half. Who's now, I think, today run his 69th marathon in 69 days. He's only got six, six or so more to do for his target of 75 in 75 days at the age of 75. He is an amazing man. That's Ray Matthews you'll meet in the second half of the programme. Jonathan, uh, start of the season for Sheffield Steelers before we get into Matt's uh, Hillsborough memories and the current team. Uh, been eventful, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Goals flying in at either end of the ice. Yeah, it's been busy. We've had, uh, we had an early start this year and... Um after winning the league last year, we, we qualified for the Champions League again, which was, you know, uh, you know something the club the club wanted and is is a lot of fun to be involved in. And we uh, we flew off to Sweden and then off to Salzburg and uh, yeah, put ourselves up against the big boys of uh, of Europe. It can be a bit of a mismatch, can't it? Because you, you're huge in this country and maybe people are being educated as to these much. Very good evening again, live on a Thursday evening, Sheffield Live TV with uh, Talking Sheffield, the Talking Sport uh, programme that we do once a week. A mix tonight of uh, ice hockey and football with two great guests, including a debut. Uh, the debut comes from former Sheffield Wednesday midfielder Matt Hamshaw. He thought I was going to forget his name there. And once, once known, and I saw him score one of the best goals that's been seen at Hillsborough, honestly. And, Everybody talks to him about that, but it really was a cracker. I'll be referring you to YouTube to check on that. But Matt Hamshaw joins us. He's full-time, though, now with Rotherham United uh, at the Academy. And also, and um, appearing for the second time in this studio, I'm delighted to say none other than the captain of Sheffield Steelers ice hockey team, Jonathan Phillips, a great guy who entertained us once before. It was actually a year ago. I'm staggered to discover, Jonathan, about a year ago that you were, well, you were here before. Yeah, it was. Time, time has flown. It has. And we're almost two years into the history now of Sheffield Live TV. More, better financed outfits, in fact, hugely financed outfits, like Red Bull Salzburg, who you come up against again this weekend. Yeah, I th and I think that's the thing. I mean, the wage, the wage packets are, are so much different. The, you know, the, the training, the, everything ar around the team is so much different. Sheffield are trying to get that kind of professionalism through the club now and... You know they 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 like to take the experience from from these trips and and, and try and put it back in into the club, which is great. And um, you know they want to be a club who are fighting at the top in all of uh, Europe. And that was uh, indeed the plan when the change of coach uh, came in and Paul Thompson was appointed. It was with a vision, I think, by Tony Smith, not only to be champions in this country, but to become a significant team in Europe as well, wasn't it? That was the vision. Yeah, I think it was a, it was a tough time where, um, you know, we just won the league and, and, and Tony decided to, uh, to move on uh, Jared uh, Adams and bring in Paul Thompson. And, and, you know, he wanted, he saw this vision for the future and, and um, you know, Tom seems to be putting that in place and is doing a great job. I, you know, I, everyone at the club seemed happy and there's some good stability there, so mm. things are looking uh, It was controversial. Looking good. That, that change was controversial, but you're beginning to see the bigger picture. It's astronomical, really. Um, you look at Premier League now, and, and, and that money's filtered through into Championship. And I mean, it, it's a great spectacle now, obviously, working at Rotherham, seeing, seeing the teams coming down to the New York Stadium is it, fantastic, fantastic for the area. I mean, you've got Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, my old club um, in that division, but it, it's just gone. It's gone crazy, to be honest with yeah, you. Not just at the top. I mean, in the lower leagues, one and two, I think the fees are pretty static and the wages aren't going up. But in the championship, 
there's a huge explosion there. Aston Villa, Newcastle. Ah, oh, well, we, we were I, talking earlier, weren't yeah. we, about Aston Villa? I mean, is it 60 million or something now spent? Some, yeah. More than some at bigger clubs in Europe, and they're in second tier of English football. Yeah. It's. I'm sure some countries look on it and 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 laugh <laughs> at times, um, but you know, the the stadiums are full. Um, people keep coming through the gates. People want to see it. They're entertained as a, as a player. I suppose they're going to take everything they can get. Um, but you know, it, it's coming to a point. I'm sure at some point where it, it doesn't need to go away from the working man's game, which mm. for me it all, always will be. But at this moment in time, you know, families are some families are struggling to get to games, so yeah. it's difficult. Yeah. yeah, it is, and I I, I share you concern mm. there that we must never get away from the working man's game but I think mm. we now and what was desired um, and it would be very interesting we could bring in Matt on the question of finance because Red Bull Salzburg I'm reliably informed uh, have a salary roll of some three and a half million euros roughly say two million mm. pounds compared to Sheffield Steelers salary roll of I think 350,000 euros I think there's some eight times difference uh, there and in fact, eight was the number of goals they got against you in your previous meeting. You went over there to Austin. <laughs> <Just a rugby. laughs> it was eight one. So I suppose yeah. that we'll talk about the re return fixture at Sheffield Arena this Sunday later. But these figures, um, this spiral is even greater in football. Matt Hamshaw, for those of you who don't know, was at Sheffield Wednesday for for a number of years, 1998 to 2005. His final season coincided with promotion. Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, yeah, from, from League One, uh, the the Lee Bullen team under under Paul Sturrock. He's since played for Stockport, uh, Mansfield, Notts County, Macclesfield, Matlock, and Stockbridge Park Steels. Currently head of academy coaching at Rotherham. But this spiral, you know, in just a sh few short years, it's just 10 or 11 since she played for. Wednesday. Yeah. It's come out of all recognition now. Isn't yeah. It? Well, I'm I'm kind of probably arguably still young enough to play, but just seeing the change in the uh, You're finances. Only 30 foot, 30 yeah, foot the foot. finances um, is 